Hey, welcome to the channel, everybody, and thanks for checking out the channel. It's called Ham Radio Dude, and it's very possible that you've built an NFED half wave, and all of a sudden, 40 meters looks great, but boy, 20's okay, and then 15 starts to look a little high, and then 10 meters, it's like not really even that great, and it might look something like this. This is extremely uh, wide, and I tried to zoom it in a little bit here, so you're missing the 10 meter portion of the band. And for today's demonstration and example, we're only talking SWR and I recognize somebody will say it's not all about SWR. Uh, but uh, if I were to tell you everything in the world, it would be a longer video, right? So anyway, what we see here is we see a dip on 40 meters. And actually, if we take a look at 40, which actually starts right about here and ends right about here, uh, we go from a 2.1 to one standing wave ratio on the lower end of 40, which I was able to get down later, uh, up to a a 1.9 to 1 SWR ratio at about 7.3 with a nice dip somewhere around 7.060. And uh, let's remember that number here for just a few moments. But 7.060. Uh, problem is, is we start to see that 20 drifts a little bit away from being in resonance. So we would like to shift this down. And when we want to go lower in band, we add length to our antenna, right? So if we look at 15, 15 starts to drift even further away. And then we start to look at 10 and 10 drifts even further away. So if your antenna is having an issue where you're seeing 40 looking great, but you're high on 20, higher on 15, and boy, you're really high on 10, maybe, uh, maybe you try this out. And I think it's very important to mention right now that you have some kind of nano VNA or uh, vector network analyzer, have yourself an antenna analyzer, something to be able to visually see what the bands are looking like and where the dips are. It will make things a lot easier. And to get started, let's go ahead and just calculate how much approximately we need to cut for 40 meter and fed half wave, keeping in mind that we always wanna have a little bit longer wire and cut shorter than the opposite because man, it is hard with Kevlar wire, for example, to pair it back together. Not saying that I know or anything. The generally accepted practice to determine the length of your antenna for a half of a wavelength is your length equals 468 divided by the frequency you wish to operate on. And I could look at these equations all day, but I'm a more practical hands-on guy. So let's just say our length is going to equal 468 divided by, uh, remember, you're going to want to cut long. I've said that twice now, but uh, divided by, for me, I went to 7.060. And that's going to give us our length equals like 66.2. 66.2, roughly. Now, if you were to go ahead and hook up your antenna after cutting 66.2, you might notice that your standing wave ratio, like here's 40 meters, is like way down here. And you're going to have to shorten. Again, it's always good to cut long. And I think that that's why the general practice is 468 divided by frequency is because you're probably going to be long. But I also think that there may be a better equation. This equation here is basically taking into account a V or a velocity factor. Now, every wire, depending on its insulation or its coating, is going to have a different velocity factor. Of course, if it's copper and so forth. The Kevlar wire that I use has a velocity factor of about 0.97. And so let's take that same equation, and this time we're going to calculate for uh, the bottom portion of 40 meters. 468 divided by 7 megahertz times 0.97. And we know from math that we do everything in the parentheses first. I believe that this number here is 66.8. Let me try that again because I didn't like it looked like a colon instead of a, a dot. 66.8 times 0.97. And then our length is just going to equal 66.8 times 0.97 or 97% of 66.8. The length of our end fed half wave is going to be something like 64.8. Back at this chart, now that you've cut your wire, you know, maybe you see that dip at the 7 megahertz portion. And you might be lucky, maybe all these move down because again, we are longer in length than originally started in the video. And maybe you're completely content with where everything's at. If that's the case, congratulations on tuning your end fed half wave antenna for 40 meters. But if you are seeing these symptoms, there is some sort of solution. 
To get the solution with reasoning to this problem, we look out to one of our favorite Elmers, K6ARK, who's great in the ham community. And he says, adding a small coil in the right spot adds inductance that affects the higher bands more than the fundamental and brings those resonant multiple dips into the right spot. So in this situation with our NFED half wave, why some people might experience this and some people might not, probably has to do with the permeability of the core being utilized. So for example, if you're utilizing a core like the one found in my NFED half wave kit, you might find yourself needing to add the inductance. And if you haven't been to my channel before, you, you might not know that I like to keep things very simple. And so if you've been licensed for 400 years, you might wanna skip this next part, but we're gonna talk about, well, what exactly is inductance? And let's utilize a slinky for an example. I'll get this for later. With the slinky push pull, okay, push pull, push pull. As we hold the slinky in each of our hands and we push up on one side, it wants to go back to a natural state. This being the natural state, push, and it goes back. As we pull, it wants to go back to its natural state. There's always a natural state that the slinky wants to go to. Okay, and basically that's occurring from resistance. Okay, so even if I pull it this way, the slinky wants to go back to its natural state. And this is how we do tricks with a slinky. And as we speak about there being just a little bit of resistance here, or more importantly here, and we start to relate that to a wire of electricity or containing electricity, electricity is the same thing. It doesn't want to just instantly change. There's a little bit of resistance in its movement and that is called inductance. Ooh. Okay, so the core permeability of a toroid might not always have the right amount of induction. And what that means is we could add it, right? Uh, of course, the more induction we have, the greater resistive properties we have. And that would be like stiffening somehow or loosening up the metal on the slinky so that there's more or less resistance. What we'll end up doing here is we're gonna create a coil about six feet away from our auto transformer or from what toroid we wound. And our coil is gonna look something like this. Now this is 19 millimeters in diameter by about 20 millimeters in height where the coil will go. Plus we have a little bit extra length here for what I created to clip our wires into place. Additionally, you could feed the wires through these holes, but the problem is if you ever need to remove the coil, then you need to fish all that wire back through. And eventually it'll look something like this. And that's a bad photo. So let's take a look at the field on how this is gonna look set up. I added this coil right here and you might notice right here, there's a little bit of a, it looks like a nick, but what that is is kind of melting because I had my heat gun too close when I originally did this with heat shrink. So that's why I opted to use electrical tape the second time around. But I have 10 turns on my coil and with 10 turns, my standing wave ratio now looks like this. And by the way, this is with the original antenna length that I was using. So what we're doing is we're comparing our results to before where we were way out of the band. Now we've brought it in and we've tamed the antenna a little bit uh, on both 20, 15, and 10. As you can see here, we're still good in the 40 range. We've brought our dip on 20 down. We've brought our dip on a 15 down and we have brought our dip in a 10 starting to look really well. And if we take a look at our analyzer results, just to recap, we started off with these results and a lot of these were out of the band and sometimes the bands weren't acceptable to use. But after only adding the coil, you could see 40 meters stays relatively the same, but we start to shift down things like 20 meters, 15 and 10 meters. And in fact, let's just take a look at, now 40 meters is all within the band, albeit it's a little high. My lowest standing wave ratio is 1.7 to 1. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna make sure that when I'm adjusting my antenna, I'm doing it where I'm gonna have it positioned so I don't wanna cut the antenna on the ground if it's gonna be 25 feet up. So this is all in a sloper configuration, but back over here to 20, we have shifted 20 quite a bit. And 20 now starts and ends completely acceptable and all 20 is usable. Uh, 1.8 to one at the lower portion and at the higher portion, we're at a 1.2 to one. We could see if we want to get that dip in the middle, we could probably add one more loop onto this coil. And if we continue to go on over here to 15 meters, it's the same thing that we're seeing. We really shifted 15 meters more toward the center frequency of where we're licensed to operate. Although our dip still isn't within 
15 meters. And we're still acceptable to use all of 15 meters, no problem, two to one. And we end the band at a 1.4 to one with our lowest dip being at a 1.2 to one uh, at 21.75. So again, maybe one more coil loop. And then we look at 10 meters and 10 meters is a, a difficult one. If I would have added another coil loop, I might've been able to use the lower portion of 10 meters, but I, I'm not really gonna be doing CW as much as I am gonna be doing sideband and FM. I've really been getting into FM lately. And uh, so 10 meters starts off at something like uh, 2.5 to one standing wave ratio, and it dips as low as a 1.1 to one. 1.1 to one standing wave ratio at 29 megahertz. And then it continues to climb back up at a 1.3 to one, 1.5 to one. And finally at a 2.1 to one at 29 megahertz or 29.6 megahertz, which means if we added another coil, we would probably be two to one at somewhere like 29.4 or 29.3 megahertz. Again, that might be completely acceptable and that might be the answer, but this shows just how much a coil can make a difference uh, just six feet away from the end of your NFED half wave. So today we learned about tuning an NFED half wave in just a brief summary. I like to do the calculation that I showed here. And when I have the calculation, I like to cut it a little long because it's always nicer to cut into the band than to cut too short and have to add on wire to get back into the band. And maybe we tune into 40 and things are looking good, but we have these dips on 20, 15, and 10 that are a higher frequency than within the band that we're trying to operate on, that's when we add this cool little induction coil. And that's when everything is happy and everything is great. As an added precaution, what I'll do is I'm gonna send these out to anybody who's recently purchased my kit. And more importantly, I'm just gonna include them in the kit here on out because this is a little 20 cent piece to print and it could make a world of difference. Have you ever used an induction coil and how did it turn out on your NFED half wave antenna? I'd love to know in the comments below and I hope this video helped you out. I hope you have a great one. This channel is called Ham Radio Dude. Please consider liking, commenting, and subscribing and have a great day. Oh, and I really wanna thank Adam K6ARK for his uh, always willingness to help and be really a great Elmer. He Adam K6ARK on YouTube, check him out.